Gran Canaria, third largest of the seven Canary Islands, located at the gateway to West Africa and surrounded by the deep blue waters of the Atlantic. A miniature continent with many different climates and landscapes set within a relatively confined space. Las Palmas is the capital of the island and metropolis of the Canary Archipelago a city situated within a peaceful, rural island. Colourful and multicultural, with a great history. The palm-lined Plaza Santa Ana is the centre of Figueta, in which both spiritual and temporal power have existed since the conquistadors arrived here. This splendid and imposing brown stone building, whose twin towers dominate the old town, has for centuries been the largest church in the Canary Islands, Santa Ana Cathedral. In 1492, on his first journey to the New World, Christopher Columbus landed in Las Palmas and spent a night in the residence of the Spanish military governor, which was subsequently named after the famous explorer, the Casa de Calion. On the edge of the Parque do Ramos is the Pueblo Canario, a replica of a Canarian village. Here are performed the traditional songs and dances of the islands with colorful costumes and nostalgic music. We begin our exploration of the island in Arucas, a small town in the north whose former wealth was created by banana and sugarcane plantations. The famous stonemasons of the Gran Canaria built this cathedral of blue-black basalt rock, an imposing building influenced by the architecture of the Sagrada Familia and dedicated to John the Baptist. Its most significant work is the Dormant Christ. Many of the historic buildings in this, the third largest city on the island, have been well conserved, particularly those in the central Plaza de la Constitución. Arucas is known for its rum distillery that originated in 1884. It contained the Canary Islands' first large, steam-powered sugar factory. Since 1911, its fine rums have been produced in the Destilerias Arihucas distillery, such as Ron Blanco and Ron Oro. It is one of Europe's most important rum distilleries. The splendid village of Terror. Its impressive basilica, which was built more than 200 years ago, is the religious center of the island and dedicated to the apparition of the Mother of God. The Virgin del Pino is regarded as the patron saint of Gran Canaria. The city features old, whitewashed townhouses with traditional wooden balconies. A small square pays homage to Teresa de Bolivar, daughter of the city and wife of the famous South American freedom fighter. Town Hall is a good example of colonial times. Again, wooded balconies. Vega.
Bodega de San Mateo is a sleepy mountain town, and the large Mercado Agricola is one of the region's main attractions. It features products from the surrounding area which, due to the richness of the water, grow in abundance. With kitchen and medicinal herbs, fruit and vegetables, eggs, cheese and wine. We travel towards the east coast. Close to Tafira, Swedish botanist Erich Sventinius laid the foundations for the Jardin Canario. For garden enthusiasts, a green paradise. Established in 1952, the botanical garden measures 27 hectares and contains around 500 endemic plant species. Moreover, the garden largely resembles the natural habitat of the plants. Nearby is the island's volcanic past, the 200 meter deep Caldera de Bandama. The result of a massive eruption that took place around 5,000 years ago. A caldera carpeted in green vegetation. Just 15 kilometers south of Las Palmas is Telde, the island's second largest city, with its truly beautiful and picturesque old town. In the narrow streets of the San Francisco district and its white facades and pretty wooden balconies, time seems to have stood still. In bygone days, this was the seat of Guanatemi, who ruled the eastern section of the island. Further south, close to the east coast in Ingenio, is the Museum of Stone and Canary Crafts. In the adjoining embroidery school, hard-working artists create fine filigree works that are offered for sale. The nearby Eguimus, with its classical sacred building, was the bishop's seat up until the 19th century. The well-illuminated basilica is located in the historic center of Aguimas and towers above the surrounding buildings. The cobbled streets and the Plaza del Rosario are decorated with bronze figures that depict the city's history and typical Canarian identity. The charm of past centuries has been well preserved in this almost African looking old town. In the extreme south of the island are the Dunas de Mas Palomas, a gigantic dune area that stretches for several miles, plus the freshwater La Chaca oasis. In 1987, it was designated as a conservation area, a natural seaside paradise surrounded by the oldest resort on the south coast.
The up to 30 meter high dunes shift around 5 meters each year. They're not formed by the nearby Saharan sand, but from crushed coral and the shells of numerous marine creatures. Travelling north from Mas Palomas to the centre of the island, we visit Palmitos Park, a man-made natural theme park. A subtropical oasis with a thousand palm trees and 1500 exotic birds that are well at home here. In the large Aqua Show Theatre, dolphins show how talented they are. Their tricks delighting thousands of visitors each day. An unforgettable, though wet, experience. A performance of the superlative which the dolphins also enjoy. Framed by palm trees, Fatiga is one of the island's many picturesque mountain villages. With a small whitewashed church and quaint stone buildings covered with red shingle. There's a good supply of water here in the central highlands with fine agricultural land. Narrow streets and splendid gardens feature in this oasis village in front of the island's highest mountain. The narrow road spirals further north and up into the mountain region in the middle of the island. with good views of the stunning volcanic landscape that originated millions of years ago as a stratovolcano. It became inactive around 5,000 years ago. The steep and jutting Roca Nublo is a most striking volcano and at 1,813 meters above sea level, the second highest point on the island. Its bizarre structure is a useful landmark and seems to balance precariously on the edge of a small plateau. The indigenous Canarians originally came here from Africa, worshipped here and made sacrifices to the sun god. A mountain road continues further north, passing a mountainous landscape that has been designated as a biosphere reserve. Cruz de Tejeda has always been a central crossing point for many roads and pathways. A stone cross identified the landscape and shepherds led their flocks of goats and sheep over the mountain. Artenara is the most elevated village on the island. There's a church in the centre of the village. Its interior features wooden ceilings in Mudeja style and ochre murals. Artenara was the original native Guanchan name of this mountain settlement, but the Spanish conquistadors named it San Matias after the patron saint of the village. 
local people continue to live in these cave dwellings, which also contain a hermit's chapel. Each year, the sculpture of Maria with child is included in a procession to the church. Next, northwest. The seven kilometer long Agaeta Valley lies well protected in the ancient volcanic landscape, a fertile Garden of Eden. In addition to various vegetables, bananas and oranges are also grown here along with mangoes, papaya and avocados. With its narrow streets and small white houses, Agaita contains the tempting aroma of herbs and freshly baked bread. Galda was the island's first capital and characterizes the proud heritage of the Guanques. The most important archaeological site on the Canaries is Coeva Pintada, discovered in 1873. This archaeological gem is now the center of a culture park with 60 buildings that depict the island's historic architecture. Plus, there's a museum. Close by is the cave complex of Genobio de Valerone, 298 caves that lie beneath a natural basalt archway. The indigenous people of the Canaries lived at various levels in these mysterious caves located in the soft volcanic tough rock. Our route now leads from the mountains to the west coast, further south, with steep slopes along the way. This is the island's wild west, with a spectacular steep coastline, barren hinterland and secluded coves. From Mirador del Balconi, Gran Canaria looks primeval and very far removed from a popular tourist destination. Suddenly, Puerto de la Aldea, a fishing village with a small harbor and waterfront promenade, as well as a stony beach. Here, tiny dinghies bob up and down alongside fishing boats. At harvest time, the produce of the nearby tomato city of San Nicolas is shipped abroad. The village is quite sleepy, its homes well cared for, and the restaurants on the promenade never overcrowded. A little further inland, there's another natural attraction, the Cacto Aldea, or Cactus Village, where various varieties of cactus are grown. One hundred thousand cacti and other plants are displayed here. In addition to a reconstructed Guanca cave and various demonstrations in an amphitheater, Numerous chrysulicae have been cultivated here.
One of the island's most beautiful and exciting roads travels through the Barranco de la Aldea, an amazing canyon. The vegetation becomes sparse and only rush bushes appear to grow here. The narrow winding road spirals higher and higher and increasingly remote. Reservoirs were constructed here in order to collect rainwater. Next, we travel south, down towards the coast, and pass through the small mountain village of Mogan in the shadow of Guir. Its center is framed by various buildings and several shade-providing trees, a place infrequently visited by noisy tourists. Here there's a village church, a romantic arcade and a small park. It's also the setting off point for various good walks. A brief stop in Molino de Viento proves to be the most interesting. Its name was derived from a restored windmill. In bygone times, flour was milled here. This is one of the last windmills on Gran Canaria in which the grinder mechanism continues to function. Puerto de Morgan and the hot south. This former fishing village is now a tourist resort with a sandy beach. Around the harbour, sun worshippers stroll across numerous small bridges that cross the village's canals, thus giving it the nickname Little Venice. Low-lying white Andalusian-style buildings, narrow streets and lush flower arrangements typify Puerta de Morgan, a wonderful setting. Its new marina attracts custom from all over the world and is the starting point for various boat trips. Excursion boats also sail from here, along the coast to the next harbour of Puerto Rico. The waterside provides a fine view of the new tourist centres as they appear to cling to the volcanic rock. Then Puerto Rico appears. Entry to the rich port is truly marvellous. The first sight is breathtaking. At several levels, white apartment blocks climb up steep mountain slopes. And there's a crescent-shaped beach with golden sand imported from the Sahara. A beautiful tourist center for both sun lovers and water sport enthusiasts alike. Imposing mountains, deep volcanic craters and a year-round mild climate. This is an island of eternal spring. Fascinating nature, 
island culture and a rich colonial past have made Gran Canaria into a sunny paradise with many fascinating and colourful faces.